Good morning, everyone. My name is Manije Ali. I teach nutrition at John Abbott College. And thank you for coming to this workshop. Um, the title is One Note Platform for Independent Learning. Uh, I am not an IT person. I don't know much about technology, but I'm passionate about teaching nutrition. And as you can see, nutrition as a field of study is quite um, demanding and challenging. And uh, we have uh, a department, nutrition department at John Abbott College. And we offer optional courses. And, um, and since uh, I started teaching in 1993, and since 19 1993, <coughs> I haven't stopped designing courses. Uh, so I designed many, many different courses. And one of the courses that I designed was in 2003, 2004. It was, uh, it's called uh, The Art of Living Well. So the intention was to guide the students, assess their wellness strategies, and to develop wellness mm -hmm. strategies. It was quite challenging, extremely challenging in 2004, 2005. And basically, at, in 2006, I said, forget it. I'm not going to teach this course because it was very difficult to guide the students. And then in 2014, John Abbott College introduced blended learning uh, with the use of technology. And blended learning is independent learning, 40% independent work. Uh, not face-to-face -face conversation with the student. And uh, I thought about my course, The Art of Living Well. And I said, oh, you know, let me try that course again. I'm going to redesign it and create a course. Uh, and I called that Health and Nutrition in the Digital Age. And it took about one year to, uh, sorry for that. <laughs> it took uh, about one year to, um, processed the course, and finally the course was approved. At that time, I was also working on um, basically evaluating apps, educational apps. And I found out there are millions of apps available. So I have to figure out uh, what are the criteria to use them in my classroom for teaching. Do I trust the content? So 2014, was, I was struggling with all this type of information. How to, should I deliver my course? And at the same time, John Abbott introduced Microsoft 365. We had no clue what it was. <laughs> so I said, OK, uh, independent learning, new course, blended learning. Uh, but to me, teaching is basically having discussion dialogue and teacher, student, and subject. And I'm extremely passionate about my subject, nutrition. And I said, OK, let me do what I, I want to see students, how they progress in course. And then when I heard that there is OneNote app in Microsoft 365, believe me, I had no idea, no clue. And I put it in my course outline, and I said, I'm going to challenge myself this year. I'm going to learn about this for <laughs> apps. And there were a lot of glitches, because that was the first time we tried it. So I knock at the IT, and I came to Brenda a few times, and I went to see our IT uh, Miles um, a few times. And I said, I want to use this. How do I use it? Um, I want to use it because this is my vision of education. I just want to make sure that the students, um, uh, they work independently, but they do not procrastinate. I want to assess their work on a regular basis. I want to give them feedback. My first cohort, I had about 36 students. I spent about 80 to 100 hours per week. Because that's a responsibility to a follow student and give them feedback on a weekly basis. So that's my first cohort. And I learned also at the same time one note. The students were extremely patient. And this year, I have only 25 students, <laughs> 23. Uh, and uh, this is my third cohort. So my intention of sharing this information, um, my intention of presenting this workshop is basically to share with you my experience with OneNote. And you can, you know, for yourself, you can assess whether it's something that would you, you would recommend to teachers uh, or not. But that's my intention. So uh, the OneNote, uh, OneNote is basically, um, as we can just 
a lot of us, we use, I use OneNote for personal reason as well, but I created OneNote for class. So there's a class OneNote that I'm using. Originally, you, um, uh, the class OneNote is, uh, we have to create it. And the way that I create it is that I manually register all my students. <laughs> Sorry, I should disconnect that one. Um, manually, I registered all my students in a group. And then when I created my class in the class notebook, and from there I brought the group and created section. So that is basically takes about five to 10 minutes to do it. Uh, but the, um, the time that I, a lot of time I spent basically in registering my students, like I had 36 students, I had to register each single one of them. Um, so that was a bit time consuming. I wish there's another way of doing it in a very efficient way. So once I created the class note, then I can access my class note through OneNote. So this is my OneNote. Uh, I actually talked to my students and I got permission to use my recent OneNote um, uh, with you and there's only a few students told me that I can actually go to their workspace and share it with you. Uh, so I will do that. Uh, so this is my course, it's called Health and Nutrition in the Digital Age, Winter 2017. <laughs> okay, so when you access it, there's a lot of information, but basically the OneNote has two sections. One is called the content library and the other one is collaboration space. I haven't used the collaboration space because my course is very much independent. Students work on their wellness strategy. They think that their information is confidential. They like they want to follow up on that. So there's no sharing among them. Um, but I use the content library. So my content library, uh, my course has two sections. The first part is you're assessing your wellness strategies. In other words, you're assessing your uh, diet, you're assessing your fitness, uh, stress, and substance use. So these are the four areas that they are assessing. And then the second part of the course, I challenge them. Uh, when it comes to fitness, I say, could you explore something that you can develop muscular endurance or strength or cardiorespiratory? So those are challenges, like something that they are not used to, but they have to research and study and adopt that challenge into their uh, daily activities. Um, so the same way I organize my content library, Organization is extremely important in OneNote because if it's not organized, the students get a bit confused. Uh, the first part, for example, is exploring health and nutrition. As you can see, I have activities for all the week. What they do, quizzes. So what I do after, let's see it's week four, I take week four, which is about protein, and I distribute that page to students' uh, workspace. So when they go to week, week four in their workspace, they say, oh, they have to study protein, and there's a quiz on protein, for example. Okay? So I have to do that every week. At the beginning of week, I have to distribute. At the end of the week, I have to look at their work and give them feedback. So that's what I mean. It's a bit time consuming, but uh, if I don't do that, the students can easily procrastinate. Okay? And I do have a video for them about procrastination so they can watch it at the same time. Um, and then I have challenges. Okay? So in terms of exploring health, I can incorporate some, vid some videos. For example, how to live to be 100. And I incorporate, uh, for example, TED Talk, and then I will ask them, can you watch this and summarize it? So I gave them a few tasks to do, and then we all get together in class and discuss it. 
to develop a common understanding of the activities that we uh, develop. So when they watch this, they write it and I can see it. I can see, I can follow if they are watching it and if they are writing their summary. Um, so let me just give you an example of uh, a student is, let's see, I think Lawrence told me that I can use her workspace. Okay, so Lawrence, uh, my student, she has these sections. Th these are the sections that I designed for them. And uh, so there's class notes. Class note is very static, like they read information. But my note, they have to do the activities. For example, here, um, this is about evolutionary path. So as you can see, she has written her commentary. I usually correct it, but the problem with one note is that students can, that's their workspace. They can do anything with that workspace. I can write my feedback and they can delete it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I do, I use the Leia, John Abbott, uh, Jack Portal in order to give my feedback and I want my feedback to be permanent. <laughs> I don't want them to delete it because there's workspace. But just recently, about uh, uh, two, three weeks ago, um, I was asked, Miles asked me, our IT, uh, asked me to uh, experiment with class note. See if I can use class uh, one note with classroom app. Because classroom app, you can actually give feedback. And the feedback will be permanent. So that's the first drawback to using OneNote. It takes a long time to register students. And the second drawback to OneNote is um, <coughs> when you give feedback, students can delete it. <laughs> so that is one of the issues. But there's, it's their workspace. Yeah. So is the Classroom app no longer in beta? It's fully out in production, or is it still in beta? Do you know? I, I don't know that. But okay. I know that I was asked whether I can experiment with it, and I said, yes, I can try it. And now my students, just one group of student, uh, students, um, they have access to. So how many students are you uh, The same group. 26. OK, <coughs> thanks. So that is the class note and one note. And as you can see here, uh, in, in one, uh, my note, uh, there's quizzes. So students can complete quizzes. So I ask them, and they write it, and I can correct it. Uh, and then I give them quiz on nutrients. They can correct it. Uh, they can answer it, and I can correct it. Um, <coughs> So the idea of um, having like a um, specific task for students to have conversation about issues, materials, uh, on their own time, reflect about it. Uh, for example, when I talk about the stress, uh, I just want them to change their mindset. And you say, um, how about instead of saying a stress, we say it's a challenge. What are the physiological response to that? So I showed them some videos that they can learn from it as well. I use a lot TED Talk, and I use a number of other apps that I have that I ask students to um, follow it. And I'm just going to show you there's an app, uh, Get to Know Your Body. There's an app here. And I ask them to, if they can download that app, but that app is about five, six dollars. But if it's a free app, they usually download. But if it's like more than a 99 cent, they just say no. So I give them other options as well. Okay. Um, so when it comes to, let's see, uh, fitness, as you can see, um, the training log, so they keep track of their training, and then they will assess it. And I give them feedback, and then I challenge them. Okay, so it is basically the course is distributed this way to all workspaces. And at the end, once they are done, 
Uh, some students are doing good job. They, they are always on time. Probably about 30% of the students. Uh, this type of course, based on the three cohort that I have, this type of course is really for them, especially mature students, content students. They, they like this course because they don't have much time and they can find time at five o'clock in the morning and they can do this uh, completed. But some students, they, even if you give them instruction, they don't understand and they come to you and they say, okay, what exactly you want? Uh, so I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one discussion. That is problem number three with OneNote because my students between age 17 to 21, they are not independent learners. The majority of them are not. So that is another challenge that I have to uh, address. Um, you have a question, sir? Yeah, I had a question about the interaction between students because you create your class, you put all your students in there, yeah. so you can see all the students' workspace. Can students uh, interact with each other, like let's say do peer peer comments or peer evaluation? That is the collaboration, yeah, and the you, collaborative space. This course is for independent learning as well without collaboration. But you haven't tried it? I haven't tried okay, it yet. But yeah. it's possible. It is possible, okay. very much. Like, um, and I, I wanted to do that for herb assessment because they did a good project individually, and I said if we can put them together, but it's extremely time consuming. Even with 25 students right now, I spend a lot more time. Uh, rather than my regular class, because it's one-on-one -on -one discussion. The students learn, especially students who are shy and they don't usually talk. Uh, this is a platform for them. It's like they really enjoy it. Uh, but it demands a lot uh, from, um, from teacher. But this type of course, like I feel like I'm, as a dietitian, I have 25 clients, and I meet with them every week at the beginning of the week and at the end of the week I give them feedback. That's how I feel that this course has been for me. And, and it's very much valuable and I will show you some of example of portfolios that they de design. Um, so um, I'll just go to the portfolio. Actually I can, design, I can show it to you right now. Um, once they're done with the assessment and they, uh, they are kind of responded to the challenges, then they have to make sense out of everything. Um, and to make sense out of the, everything, I call that e-portfolio. I encourage students to use creative way of designing their portfolio using digital media. Uh, some students are very good. They are very, uh, they have a sense of aesthetic. <laughs> they, even if they don't know technology, they want to play around. Like just the yesterday, last on Tuesday, one of my students said, I have no clue how to create a blog, but I'm going to do it. Okay? So I said, okay, great. Uh, and some of them, they can just do it very quickly. But I gave them, I gave them a complete freedom. And I say, just show me how you learn and put all the information together and I'm going to value creativity and I'm going to dare to give you points for creativity and imagination. And when portfolio is 20%, there's 10% for the content, but there's 10% for uh, creativity and imagination. Um, so in 2016, my first cohort, uh, last year uh, the second cohort was in content. Uh, it was a bit different. Uh, I'll just show you. These are some examples of electronic portfolio. Okay? Uh, I'll just show you the first one. Let's see, Sophie. By the way, students gave me permission. So what she did, I said, can you just show me how, what you learn? And she came up with this design. So it's basically simple, a blog, free blog. And I said, you have to feel comfortable because it will be public. And the student said she, she's very proud of it and she wants to make it public. So, um, so that's what her, blo that's her uh, portfolio is. Uh, so she described uh, her learning um, and a little bit about what we covered. Okay. And then after that, she talked about, of course, the diet. Diet is the important one. Some of them is my copyright, like this chart is copyrighted because I design it. Um, but uh, anyways, so this is her portfolio. This is how she showed me that she learned in this course. Okay. 
And this is part of dietary challenge. So once I give them a template and I say design a diet that has potential to be healthy, and once they design it, they have two options. Either they analyze it, use it as software that we have at John Abbott, or make it. <laughs> make it, test it, and take a photo and upload it. <laughs> and some students do that, but some other students tell me, OK, I don't have all the ingredients. It's very expensive. I'm going to analyze it. So that option is available. But this student particularly, she, she actually made her meals and took a photo. The presentation is important. Um, and even with designing diet, I really want them to be very creative. Like, I challenge them with uh, uh, bizarre templates like for breakfast you will have legume which is like uh, uh, <laughs> lentils beans uh, so they have to think about what is the possible breakfast that they can design uh, and I always put a bit of nuts and seed uh, in every meal and I want to make sure that there's a lot more uh, plant-based food so they have to really come up with interesting way of designing their meals so the same thing continues. Um, so this is a blog. And I know some of my students, this term, they are developing blog. Uh, and then fitness is the same thing. So these are basically the content that I cover. And then she talk about it. And she says some of her activities and some of the challenges that she embraced and so on, and it becomes stress and substance use. Substance use, I usually um, approach it in a different way because it's a bit of a challenging thing. Uh, so I want them to assess their maximum limit for alcohol, for example, instead of assessing how much alcohol they are drinking. So they can basically compare how much they drink on their own way. Uh, and the same thing, I don't want them to mention anything if it's illegal substances. I just don't want to deal with it, you know. But I'm focusing on herbs, you know, herbal product. I'm focusing on supplements. And then I want them to analyze the claims related to supplement. Um, uh, but when it comes to stress, I, um, I also give them some... Um, uh, tests to do and write down the scale, uh, the, the score. Um, but what I found out that a lot of my students do struggle with a bit of stress and anxiety. And the recent um, study suggests, the statistics suggest that one out of three Canadians uh, over age 15 struggle with uh, mental, some mental disorders <coughs> and um, substance use. Um, so it's kind of interesting. But these are challenging things, so we have to approach it in a very uh, sensitive way. But students have been very good at it so far. So this is one example. See, she kind of came up with the idea how everything affects her level of stress. So if I close this one, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's what. So let me just see, I can show you Prizzy. A student decided to look, create her portfolio in Prizzy. Um, and, um, you know, so that was another option. She had no clue about Prezi, but through that electronic portfolio, <coughs> she tested and she spent a lot of time. Um, some are doing like, I even myself, I think sometimes I find Prezi is too time consuming. I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> but I think if students want to do it, that's good enough. You know? uh, and the good thing about this is in during elect, um, designing the electronic portfolio, students are really, like they spend a lot of time, they love it. They want to create something. Um, okay. And the other one that I would like to show you, which is kind of interesting as well, uh, my mm -hmm. own, this one maybe. Uh, this is a, another blog, but the students thought that she wants to use audio, so she recorded her voice. So I thought that was interesting as well. And the other one is kind of funny, but he made me actually watch 37 minutes of video. <laughs> uh, it's like basically he created, see, in health and nutrition. And then a lot, played with a lot of stereotyping and all that. 
But what he did, which I found interesting, is that whatever I taught, he read it out loud and said, hmm, what does it mean? That uh, last class I had, uh, health and nutrition in the digital age, that was really interesting. Um, I feel like it's going to be a fun class. Like I'm, I'm looking forward to learning stuff in it. But I feel like it's going to be stuff I already like know, like how to be healthy. Um, I don't know, it seems pretty simple, right? Try to go to the gym, lift a lot of weights. The more weights you lift, I think you do, you'll get more muscles, like bigger muscles. And then, you know, gotta eat a lot of protein and, like, stay away from junk food. But, like, I think you should be healthy, like, if you do those things. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Like, I think that class is gonna be pretty easy. Like, being healthy, how hard could that be? <laughs> That's why she can't do it. 37 minutes. I'm not going to show the whole thing. So as you can see, these are examples of some electronic portfolio. And I'm actually looking forward to <laughs> see what students are going to present this year. I encourage them one time. I always encourage my computer science students, could you just create a kind of an app? So we don't do the calculation, and we, the calculation can be done automatically. So I always encourage the students. But at the end of the semester, when they are putting together their portfolio, they are so busy. They are so busy that it's very uh, hard um, to uh, do much because they don't have the time to do it, in a way. So anyways, um, what I learned from this course, I'll just give it a break for next term because I, I tried it three, um, uh, three uh, times. This is my third cohort. But I think it has a lot of potential, one note. Uh, it has a lot of potential if we are, have a small group of students and if we value um, independent learning, if we, um, we have time and available to guide the student through the process. Uh, there's a lot of potential for that as well. Uh, what I like about OneNote that I can actually see what they are doing. I can see. Maybe it's not a good thing or that, but I see it. And sometimes I send them a note and I say, okay, your workspace is empty. Like there's nothing written. Or do you have any intention of completing it? So I have a lot of this type of uh, <laughs> conversation with them. But I only meet with the students um, to just develop a common understanding. Uh, for example, when it came to herb assessment, uh, I want them to un better understand what does it mean um, fact. Uh, there's a lot of claims, so we had to kind of get together and have a conversation about that. Uh, nutrition, after all, is a science uh, discipline, uh, and most of my students don't have scientific background, so I have to negotiate that as well with students. Um, but uh, so far, uh, I mean, I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. Um, but it's a lot of work. Sometimes I get tired of giving feedback. <laughs> uh, but it's a lot, of, um, uh, a lot of interaction with the students. You get to really know them, really, one on one. Um, if you have any question, yeah? Um, oh, wait, wait. Um, just uh, one of the subjects I've been interested in in the last couple of years is uh, the, the, the newer generations coming up and um, uh, standard evaluations versus uh, more digital storytelling. I'm wondering if you have uh, some more anecdotes to share about students that are experiencing 
this type of reporting and, and this type of presentation, maybe for the first time through your class, um, what is the general reaction? Um, do you feel that there's there's better engagement from the students mm -hmm. uh, from this approach and just yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of engagement if yes I mean uh, but it is the same in all my nutrition courses so I don't know how to distinguish in a way and I use technology in all my nutrition courses this is independent learning so 40 percent on their own that is the only difference um, Students are in age that they have a lot of opinion about health, and they have a lot of opinion about uh, nutrition. And um, I actually address it by showing them a TED Talk. It's about evolutionary, three evolutionary path. And since then, I don't have much conflict. Um, students could be pass, become passive if there's a lot of information. Uh, so you have to know how much information is too much information and how much production you expect from them because they can actually give up easily. Um, uh, Sometimes they tell me for just... Um, <coughs> in, in some of the challenges, they have to do something. They have to research and reflect about the, their situation. And I think that is a bit uh, difficult. However, in diet, weight, and diseases, I can see a lot of um, motivation when it comes to weight management and disease prevention. I use some of the tools. I use some of the digital medium. Uh, and we do some of the calculation in class. Um, I use a lot of apps. Like instead of really memorizing recommendation, there's an app that is free, they can download it and open it and look at the recommendation and just compare it and they can have it in front of them. They like that. They like to have access to information. So my strategy has been always to show them how to evaluate, so information literacy. And once they get it, I think they can, they can easily participate. But it's always a challenge. But they could be passive. They be, could become passive if it's too much information. And they, I think if you demand a lot from them, they can also become passive. So it's not automatic that if you use digital medium, they can be motivated. I think there's a, there's <coughs> a limit somewhere. And it varies from one class to another one. Sometimes I'm asking too much. Sometimes I'm not asking enough. So I haven't established the level. Uh, why not uh, the portfolio within the OneNote environment? Um, I, I think with TED Talk, I'm able to bring uh, the videos. But when it, they have like Prezi, I think there's, I don't know how to incorporate that platform into <laughs> OneNote. No, what I mean is like, why not uh, open uh, like my portfolio, yeah. uh, OneNote for each student? So well, that's a lot of work, yes. That's a good I mean, idea. Uh, as an empty space. <laughs> yeah. And they would build the portfolio with the OneNote application. Did okay. you thought of that one? No, I haven't. I haven't. I just have done it like in a very static way. For example, they can just keep gathering information in order to use a platform in order to design their portfolio. But I haven't used the portfolio. Yeah, that's, I can try that one. So uh, my other question was about um, potential collaboration uh, with physical education because there's an element of uh, wellness and things like that. Is, have you built any sort of bridges with phys ed uh, uh, at all or is that something maybe uh, in the future? I am all for collaboration and I think I have been very proactive in promoting interdisciplinary that uh, an area, for example, nutrition, we are moving away to food studies rather than just focusing on nutrition. Um, however, the college system is still as such that there are specific departments and they kind of have their curriculum. 
Um, but yeah, I see potential working with humanities, potential working with physical education. I am fascinated by the computer department and I can give anything to collaborate with them. I can give anything to collaborate with business because most of business the students go into nutrition related um, kind of uh, entrepreneurship uh, task. Uh, but I think our college SAGEP system is not yet uh, ready for that type of uh, collaboration. Um, I actually uh, sent a copy of OneNote, uh, my presentation today, to our dean and I said, would that be possible that I present that during our PED day, <laughs> general education PED day? I haven't received any reply, so I think he's uh, still thinking, I assume. <laughs> yeah. It's easy. It's, um, Technology is um, making, has made my life quite easy. Uh, and I don't know much technology, but I have a vision of how I'm going to teach. And then I try to find out what is out there to help me. So, and sometimes if I have to invest a lot of energy and time, and I say, no, 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 that's, that's not for me. Um, but nutrition and health, it's all out there. So there's a lot of apps. There are millions of apps available. Uh, so there's a lot can be done with uh, the digital medium in my subject. And, and also you have to, um, as I said, every year practically I feel that I am creating new courses. And that is how nutrition is. You can't really feel comfortable. You just always have to be like avant-garde in a way in terms of conceptualizing because I teach mainly optional courses and I exist because the students are taking my courses. So I have to be really proactive in that way. Mininjay, you spoke about um, your template for uh, the evaluation of uh, apps. Did that go any further with, uh, I think you were in contact with uh, one of our IT partners. Uh, I forget which one, was it maybe APOP? Because you were going to yeah. work, they had a platform yeah. already mm -hmm. and then you were going to work it with them uh, about yeah, putting your resources in. Yeah, it didn't go any, in. I didn't follow okay. up on Did that. Did you want to speak a little bit about that research project and maybe some key points that you could share with us? Sure. Um, uh, I was interested originally, uh, before uh, designing a blended learning course, I was interested in uh, incorporating educational apps in my teaching. Uh, for example, a nutrition is a science of biochemistry, but also we cover a lot. But I'm not teaching biology, but I would like students to understand a little bit human physiology so when I talk about it, they kind of understand. So I thought what will be interesting way of teaching. So I basically um, uh, looked at number of uh, educational apps and I said, I don't know how to trust them. Sometimes I could find a mistake and I can assess it and sometimes it's like the presentation is interesting but like I said there should be criteria to evaluate some educational apps. So I spent some time and I researched and I looked at the number of apps and I came up with a set of criteria. I don't remember it off, like there was very a few uh, things to look at. Um, uh, I was much more interested how the data was compiled, uh, where we get that information, like credibility of the content. Uh, and also I was interested in the uh, aesthetic as well, whether it is appealing, whether it is too much. Because for me, aesthetic is, um, you should not feel it, but it should be comfortable. Like you can navigate without really, like it shouldn't be a noise. Like it should be just easy to navigate through. Um, so I look at aesthetic and also uh, um, credential. And uh, the other thing that I look at is uh, privacy. Uh, because I thought in educational, with educational apps, um, I, I didn't feel comfortable always registering <laughs> and tracing information and be connected to Facebook and all that. And I said, you know, I prefer to pay three, four, five dollars for educational apps, but I would like to basically protect the identity and confidential information. 
Um, uh, so to tell you the truth, I didn't come up with a lot of uh, educational apps <laughs> Uh, that were trustworthy, <laughs> especially in the area of nutrition, it was really difficult. Uh, but in the past two years, uh, there are some associations that are basically getting funding and they are proactive in designing it. Uh, for example, Dietitians of Canada. I'm sure we all, you know, um, I wish I could show some of the apps. I don't know if it's possible or not. Um, I haven't tested them, no. So okay. Is that um, is there any way of I connect them? Is there any password uh, uh, connecting to Wi-Fi? Yeah. Right there. It's a reptic for your. Uh, but but the project them. Oh. oh. Okay. I do have an adapter, but I I don't know if I I'll see if my adapter is. Ha! Huh. I always carry it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a website. It was a website. Now it's coming back to me. APOP was had developed. Yeah. Uh, I think it was called EduCap, something like that, where people were putting uh, applications that were uh, that they had vetted. Is there any connection? Sorry, and I can't seem to find it. So I'll have to ask Mary Jeanne. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't think about that one to connect it. It's uh, No. It's no. Not, it's not the same. It's not the same? No. Okay, but maybe, maybe that will be for another time, I suppose. Um, but, but educational... Um, what, what's the name of the app? Uh, the name of the app that I, the one that I really use on a regular <coughs> basis, I'll just, uh, there's one that is called Human Body DK. It looks like that, okay? Uh, the credential I supported, respected, um, no problem. And what happened is that, uh, sorry, can I move? <laughs> what it is, it's like, let's see if I talk about uh, function of nutrients. I basically try to tell a story uh, to students. Uh, and let's see, cell looks like that. And I say, could you take a pen, put a dot in front of you, and look at the size of it? And that will consist of more than 40 different cells. So think about in human body how many millions of cells you have. And when I talk about the function, a lot of, when I talk about function, I take them through this. So instead of really covering biology, I talk about this is a cell, it has a computer inside, which is genetic package, and it has a factory, it is made up of the doors. So uh, like that, the top is the one, yeah. It's about $6.99, but it's, a lot of my science students actually purchase it. And uh, that is, they can learn, it's a good reference for them. When it comes to nutrition, another good reference is USD. I can write it, I don't even have a pen. Um, hold on, I'm just going to show you this one. USDADRI. It is. Um, it is used here, yeah, it, is, uh, it is basically United States government of agriculture and they release that. Um, you can calculate your recommendation and if you want to know about folic acid, which is a vitamin, you click on folic acid, it gives you a lot of information. The top or not? So, uh, so students download that, it's free. And of course, TED Talk, uh, and then there's another one called Cookspiration. Cookspiration. <laughs> I'll just show you this one here. Cookspiration. I 
as you can see. So let's see Thursday afternoon, what would you like to eat? <laughs> and you click on it. And then it will give you some idea about the recipes. It gave you the nutrient content of the recipes. Um, so this is by Dietitians of Canada. Uh, and then of course there are other uh, apps that I use. The one that I like a lot, it's called Grade Courses Plus. But for that you have to have a membership. It costs $15 a month. Um, uh, great courses. It's basically lectures. Lectures about uh, different topics and of course I, I cover a lot of uh, those, some of those topics. So it is for me to get idea about how to teach. Um, and the other one is called Texture. It's all magazines. Okay, but for that also you have, um, you have to pay. And also there's another thing I teach, I teach sustainable food system, and for that also I have a calculator, that, thank you, that students could use in order to assess their diet, whether it's sustainable or not. Okay. Just to let you know, when in 1990s, I've been teaching for 24 years, in 1990s, when I, uh, the diet assessment used to take about six weeks. Now it's taking about one hour, just to give you an idea, the difference. And then I used to cover, for example, fitness in six, seven weeks. Now I can easily cover it in two weeks. Human body, I used to spend about maybe um, two, three weeks covering human body, but now I can teach it in one hour. Because of technology? because of the apps, because of technology. So it, it made my life easy. It allowed me to do other things, other, uh, you know, cover other material or go much more in detail with a specific topic. But again, I teach nutrition, and nutrition is a subject that there's a lot of information available online. It's not like any other subject, sciences. So as I said, <laughs> using uh, digital media made my life quite easy. Yeah. And I have fun. And I am exploring different possibilities.